the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack here with Inside Jack. One of the questions that's come up over and over again over the years has been whether atrial fibrillation can be responsible for causing mitral regurgitation. And the corollary, of course, is whether the treatment of atrial fibrillation, the restoration of normal sinus rhythm, could eliminate mitral regurgitation or at least reduce it. And we've got a paper in press in Jack that addresses this very issue. And here to discuss it with us this morning is Dr. Zach Gertz. And Zach is a staff cardiologist at the University of Pennsylvania. So Jack, uh, Zach, tell us, uh, uh, tell us about the design of the study. Right, so as you mentioned, Dr. DeMaria, we uh, developed an interest in patients with a unique type of mitral regurgitation where the leaflets themselves uh, are normal and move normally, uh, which has been debated in the literature um, as rising from atrial fibrillation. Uh, what we did was follow a cohort of these patients undergoing catheter ablation of their atrial fibrillation uh, and monitored them both clinically and echocardiographically for one year. And what we saw was that in those patients in whom the ablation was successful, with restoration of sinus rhythm, the mitral regurgitation essentially disappeared. Less than a quarter still had significant mitral regurgitation after one year. Whereas well, in those patients in whom the procedure was not successful, uh, over 80% still had significant mitral regurgitation. That's, that's fascinating, Zach. Why, why is it that atrial fibrillation could produce mitral regurg and the treatment reverse it? Well, that's a great question, uh, and what we think is the cause is dilation of the mitral annulus. And we looked at that question two ways. We compared our mitral regurgitation cohort to a cohort of patients also referred for ablation but without significant MR, uh, and we saw that there were two echocardiographic variables that were associated with M this type of MR. One was left atrial enlargement. The other was mitral annular dilatation. And in a regression analysis, the only echo variable that remained associated was mitral annular dilatation. Now, in addition, after the ablation, what we saw was that in the patients in whom it was successful with restoration of sinus rhythm uh, and resolution of the mitral regurgitation, there was a significant improvement in the mitral annular size. Whereas in the patients in whom the procedure was not successful, there was no change. So we took that to be fairly convincing evidence that it was mitral annular dilatation causing this mitral regurgitation. Now, when we reviewed the paper, we recognized that one of the significant limitations was that the quantitation of mitral regurgitation was done based only on jet area. And of course, that's a, a significant limitation because jet area or, or jet dispersion is largely a function of the pressure gradient between the chambers. But I, I wonder, I guess the the conclusion that one might draw from your study is that you, if you have a patient with significant mitral regurgitation and atrial fibrillation, uh, you ought to eliminate the atrial fibrillation before considering surgery. Well, I think that's certainly an idea. I, as you say, our paper is probably not able to say definitively that these p patients need to be treated with a rhythm control approach. However, we know from the literature that uh, any degree of significant mitral regurgitation, even only moderate, is associated with worse cardiac outcomes. Uh, I think it's fair to conclude that this type of mitral regurgitation might also be associated with worse outcomes. And we see that if you are able to uh, successfully restore sinus rhythm, the mitral regurgitation appears to improve dramatically. So I would say it's probably worthwhile to attempt a rhythm control approach before referring a patient for surgery for this type of mitral regurg. Well, fascinating data. Certainly, we see lots of patients with mitral regurgitation and atrial fibrillation, and this puts a new twist on the relationship. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.